Hi, and welcome to Pitch and Deva News Cape Town Tour. As the Pitch and Deva News team, we came down here in the motherland in Cape Town. We're going to have a few interviews with the top fences of Cape Town. They'll share with us how pitch and racing in Cape Town is and why they're racing here in Cape Town. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody. I would like to um, uh, spread a, a message um, to catch the South African uh, Pigeon News portal on pigeondivernews.com and don't miss their web series where different founders get featured on the show every Fridays on YouTube Pigeon Diver News TV the news company is owned by Mr. Samuel whom I met and who is a client of Pipa <clears throat> and uh, who used to buy the Golden Prince and uh, Gentle Lady <clears throat> and um, every other, um, yeah, many other super pigeons. And his main ob objective is to grow the sport, the pigeon sport in South Africa, uh, as there is a big potential, and also to grow the sport worldwide. So um, don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this uh, channel and um, to like or comment the channel. So I, um, would like to say hello to all the pigeon founders in South Africa. Uh, many regards from Belgium. I'm Nicholas. Uh, this was Nicholas from Pipa from Belgium. Bye bye. Can you just uh, give us a, a brief history on how you started racing and, and how it has been? How did it all start? It actually started with my older brother, um, Ishmael. Um, that was in the 90s when he started pigeon racing. Um, he spent many hours on the internet searching about pigeon racing. And at that time, I wasn't much interested, you know, and I thought to myself, hey, what is this guy doing? Watching pigeons, looking in the sky every Saturday. And then one day I started to get in the loft with him and he was actually my mentor, you know, he's the one that taught me everything. Um, from there on, we started to get the children involved, you know, teach them about cleaning lofts, feeding animals. Um, we're actually situated in a very nice area, it's on a farm. And the kids enjoy it here and they enjoy the pigeon racing. Um, unfortunately, this year with COVID, I decided not to let them race. Um, there's a lot of reasons for it, you know. Um, safety of them comes first before the sport. Um, yeah, but we enjoy the sport, looking after the pigeons, racing them, training them. Um, my brother, like I said, he's the one that taught me, he's still with me with partners. Um, children help me pack in the morning, you know, if we had need to go toss. There's such a lot of stuff that they do to help me make the job easier. Um, this year we started a bit late, we started only at the 8th race, you know, and um, pigeons are starting to perform now. Um, yeah, there's not much I can say. The only thing I can say, we need to do something um, to uplift the sport a bit, you know, get more children involved. Um, it keeps the children away from a lot of things. Um, what we wish for our own kids, we should wish for other children also, you know. Um, there is a lot of children interested in pigeon racing here in Western Cape. Unfortunately, you know, it is an expensive hobby. Um, children can't afford to maintain the pigeons. We see where we can help. Um, Yasin can, does a lot for the youth, um, but we need a lot of help aside, especially for the children. If we want to keep the sport growing, we need to do something for the youth. Um, they put up a few lofts for children also, you know, and um, like I say, but the main thing is maintaining the pigeons, especially for the children. Um, some of our children is fortunate, they get in the hobby with everything. Then you get children that doesn't have that. Um, they're interested, their parents can't afford to keep the hobby in for them. Um, 
So I really think we should do something with children with this hobby is concerned. I think that's, and, um, yeah. And, and in terms of doing for the kids, um, do you think the involvement of the juniors here is, is, is coming all right? Um, yeah, it's coming okay. Um, you know, like I say, if your father's into pigeon racing already, it's much easier for that child. Um, I'm talking about my own child. It's much easier for him because everything is handed on a platter. Pigeons, medication, food for the pigeons, everything. But like I said, I don't just hand it to them. They have to help me in the loft because at the end of the day, they're not going to appreciate it. Then you get children that is less fortunate that enjoys the sport. I mean, I get children walking in here all the time. Uncle, is there, isn't there a pigeon or two? Uncle, I need some wood for my loft, you know? And you help where you can, but at a certain point, um, we need minister of sport or somebody to step in and help the children. Because uh, it's, it's costly to put up a loft. And I mean, how many children can you help? But there is a lot of children that is really, really interested in pigeon racing. Um, like I say, they come walking in here. Sometimes I give them some medication. I go and look um, at their pigeons. If their pigeons have a problem, we see where we can help. Um, in this area here at the back, like you guys came in now, there's a couple of lofts also. Um, there's a few children that have lofts. And I mean, it's sad sometimes if you just see the state that the loft is in, you know. Um, but we can do something to uplift the sport, especially if we start at the bottom with the children, you know. Um, something very important that I always tell my kids, it's not always about winning, you know. You have to strive to win, to perfect that. But if you lose the week, shake that person's hand, congratulate him, next week we try again. But they as children must know the hobby is much important than the win and then you will have success. And, and speaking about success, uh, what's your proudest moment you had since you started? My proudest moment was um, the time we flew on FBHU truck. Um, we went first and third on the Graver and Ned board race. You know, um, thousands of pigeons. Um, there was only a few birds thrown the night in the back section. Um, I think about four birds were still at the back and we had two of them. I think that was one of our proudest moments, you know. Um, the very same year we ended second. Um, two years ago on the SSPO track, um, I came first on the first bird points. My brother came second. So we partners, but we fly from different lofts. So to achieve that first, the one love and the other love second, I think that is a great achievement. And, and now in terms of um, your performance, which which lines or bloodlines or strains do you have in your love that, that went out for you? Um, the time? Like we have some of the polys, it's birds that came in from Holland and then um, we cross them with um, a great fanciest pigeons, Mr. Leslie Blake, he passed on. Um, he bred some birds for us and then we crossed the two and it worked perfectly. Perfectly and we, I would say 90% of our love consists of that birds, you know. But that bird really performs for us. Sixteen eight thirty six. This hen's father I actually bought on the auction. Um, the cock belonged to Mr. late Mr. Silver Pinkin, and then um, we crossed that cock with one of our own hens, and we breed a couple of these birds with the white flights. Um, this is the bird that he chose two years ago to fly in the juniors, and then he beat me about with ten minutes, you know. Um, yeah, and then I flew her last year, Springfontein. She went third in the Federation. Um, yeah, so she's actually a three-year-old already, but um, still going strong, racing. Um, the own sister of this bird, we won the Virginia only bird on the night. 
the sister is actually in the stock loft now. Um, and then this is a sister of the one of the inns that won the board race, you know, the Krav Renet board race. Um, this is a full sister. And um, this is actually my time by the weekend straight in Berg. She went fifth in the federation. Um, so I'm actually very happy with the stock birds that we have and our racing pigeons. These birds are actually excellent on 600 to 800 kilometers. Yeah, yeah. They do very well on that distance. And tell us about the loft. I mean, why, why did you build it up high? And, and why the size? Um, is there any uh, theory behind that? The reason why the loft is so high, um, this is farming area. You know, um, there's a lot of animals that kills pigeons, rats, everything. So we had to lift up the loft high. Um, as you can see, I've got a ladder that I take down at night. I don't even want to make a permanent staircase because I think I will cry in the morning if I go into my loft. Yeah, that's why it's so high. And another reason is for the dampness. This is farming area, so it's very wet. Like you can see, the water doesn't even seep away, you know. Um, there is times when we struggle to get our birds conditioned right because it's very cold and damp and wet here. Um, yeah, but we work on it. We work on it. And how many birds do you race birds do you um, have in here on, uh, on a yearly? On a yearly, I think we start off about 100, 110, you know. As we train, then we will drop some. At the moment, we're sitting with about 75. That's not so bad, you know, uh, raising pigeons. Um, yeah, we have about 75 at the moment. Um, it's, it's tough racing in Western Cape because the pigeons come through lots of mountains, lots of walks, there's lots of territories you must go through. Um, so you can do whatever you like, you drop pigeons. You drop pigeons. Yeah. And, and what do you hope for the future? Um, with your loft, your, you're helping your kids involved? Um, for the future, um, the only thing that I wish for is that they should carry on one day. You know, um, as it looks now, they're very interested in the pigeons. Um, yeah, but not just for me, but for all children that's involved in pigeon racing, that things should become a bit easier for them, you know, um, that we can see how we can help them, you know, try and uplift the sport. Because it is a sport that's going down a bit at the moment here in Western Cape. Um, children's, the future. Yeah. And now, um, in terms of um, you racing here in the Western Cape, are you going to retire any time soon? Uh, no, no, no. I think um, they will have to build something for me to get on if I can't get on there anymore one day. You know, but uh, I don't think retirement is not part of the plan. And I don't think it will be part of the plan very soon. You know? yeah. uh, and if you had to change something, or if you're on a board, or what? what would you change? Look, at the moment on the SSPO track, I'm very happy with things, the way it's going there. Um, the only thing that I would say is um, get more children involved. Um, put pigeon raising politics one side, because at the moment there's three tracks in Western Cape. Um, even if there should be one mother body, it would be fine. Um, but the children, that's my main priority that I want to see for this sport to grow. Because, I mean, we're not going to live forever. They're the future. We have to get them involved if we want to see one day. I mean, I said now, I don't know, one day I'm going to get on top, you know? But if they're not interested, then I won't see a pigeon dropping here. You know, so on the board side, I'm very happy see, the way things is ran, you know? I don't have any issues there, yeah. And, and um, what, what is your ultimate um, tip that you can give people out there? Or we can say before the tip, uh, what's your biggest mistake that you've 
ever done? My biggest mistake that I've ever done in pigeon racing, um, not looking after my birds properly off season. That is, I think most pigeons fans here, that's their biggest mistake. Um, off season, if you come in a loft, um, if you look at pigeons, you can see already the condition that they're in. You can scale from there how that season is going to be. But if you don't look after them off season, you can do whatever you like in the season. But you're not going to have success. Um, off season, their job, vegetables, carrots, grated, feed the birds every day, every day. So off season, I think that's the best tip I can give anybody. You know, um, we started one year, um, opening of the season, and our birds was right in front without medication. Because we were sitting behind them off season, the whole off season. So if you have a healthy baby and it goes nice through the molting, I think everything is easy after that. Just tell us, what would you say to the other young people like you out there and about the sport you know, and what, what it's done for you? Um, what can you share to the young kids like you racing? I know, especially in Joburg, we don't have quite a lot of young, young guys, but here you have and starting racing at this age, uh, might bring you a lot of success. But what can you say to the other young guys uh, around the world, no, not just here? Never give up. If you lose, you try, you try harder next time. Never give up. Yeah, and uh, that means you, you won't give up. Yes. So you, you like racing, yeah? Yes. And what, what, do you, what would you want to achieve um, throughout? To be the head of points with the birds. And you would you want to sell birds in the future and sponsor other kids? Yes. Just something that happened last year on the junior truck. Um, I said, okay, pick 10 birds for you. Then you fly that bird to the juniors. I said, okay, dad. The one that he took, and I thought to myself, yo, I told him now to take 10. But the one hand that he took was one of the best hands in the loft. And um, we flew the Toes River. And as we were standing here, the blue white flight in was coming on. And she dropped in, and I only got a bird 10 minutes after that, so he beat me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think he's got a good eye for birds. Um, but he must just, you know, care for the next person also. You understand? Care for the next child also. Um, yeah, we even can help somebody, must try and help them, you know? Um, so it doesn't just go about yourself. Because in any competition, if there's no competitors, you know, then there's no sport. So if he's got competitors, help them. Even if it means that person is going to fly well. But you can't just want to give a person the wrong information. You know, if somebody asks you something about pigeon sport, you rather don't say or give the person the truth. You understand? So, um, yeah, that would be my advice to all pigeon fans. Yes. Somebody asks you something, you rather tell them the truth or don't say anything. Yeah. And what do you hope for Western Cape? Yeah, for Western Cape, um, I just hope we're going to grow more, especially the SSPO. You know, there's um, a lot of people involved that's on the admin that does a lot for us. Um, they heart and soul, you know, in the pigeon racing. We can see some of the admin, they push their sport aside, you know, to see that everybody's happy first before they start even with their own tossing and stuff. Because admin work is a lot of work on the truck. Um, I mean, I was a race secretary at CFHU um, for a couple of years. I know myself, it's a lot of work, you know? Yeah, I think that will be closing remark. And there you have it from the MNI Diamond Lofts and from Mohammed that you rather not say anything than not tell the truth to other fans. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Pigeon Dever News channel. We're still in Cape Town, the Western Cape on our Pigeon Dever News uh, Cape Town tour. My name is Tato Schoen and this is Pigeon Dever News.